Hi. Microservice is definitely a hot topic uh, during this edition of DevOps. Some say that it's high too much, but hey, you see here in uh, this desert in Bolivia, there's definitely a move to a microservices architecture. You see the typical hexagons. Uh, jogging aside, the, uh, this quickie is about Drop Wizard. It's one of the frameworks in Java that you can use uh, to uh, build microservices. I will start with a short introduction of myself, then we will cover the basic, uh, basics of Drop Wizard. What uh, I will not do is a comparison of uh, the different uh, frameworks you can use in Java uh, to build microservices. Actually, this is one of uh, the advantages of uh, a microservice architecture, that uh, instead of a monolith, you now have uh, loosely coupled services working uh, with each other. So uh, technical choices are not that important anymore. Uh, the implementation of a microservice should not leak to uh, to other uh, to the consumers of that microservice. So do you can stop looking for the golden hammer or his uh, cousin uh, the silver bullet. You don't need those anymore in a microservices architecture. Uh, we are using or I'm using Drop Wizard since a year. Uh, I will share with you the major lesson uh, that we have learned so far. And the last thing I will cover is the deployment of a Drop Wizard application as a bar. Uh, uh, I'm an independent. I'm, uh, my current gig is at RCEA, that's uh, an agency of the European uh, Commission. Our team is migrating a set of ColdFusion applications to a microservices architecture. For the backend, uh, we are using Java, and one of the things we are using is, of course, Drop Wizard. The frontend is written in uh, Angular ES, and uh, yeah, it's a single page application. Uh, Drop Wizard. What it basically is, it's just uh, opinionated glue. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, it's a, a combination of proven, well mature libraries that you find in Java. They use uh, Jersey uh, as the REST framework, Jackson to serialize to JSON and vice versa, Jetty as the web container. But an, a typical thing that you see that is that in the core, dependency injection is missing. Uh, the Drop Wizard team offers a, a bunch of uh, extra modules. Uh, there is also a vibrant community, uh, which, is, uh, which creates also uh, uh, 50 or uh, something like that uh, third-party modules. How does it look uh, from the class level? Uh, the central object is the application. It's the responsibility of the application to parse a JAML uh, configuration file and to populate a corresponding Java object uh, with it. Uh, then it will start, the application will start uh, the Jetty engine, it will start the Jersey engine, it will wrap those into an environment object and the environment uh, object is propagated to the application. It becomes available in the, uh, as a parameter of the run method. Let's look at uh, a small uh, code uh, example. I don't have much time, so I will go uh, very quickly. Sorry about that. But you can find uh, the whole, uh, you can find anything, uh, everything on GitHub. So in the POM file, you need to add uh, the, uh, the drop wizard uh, dependency. Then uh, we have our YAML configuration file. And we have, uh, I added the property uh, with the value devox Antwerp. I over, did override the port of the jetty. Then we have uh, the corresponding uh, configuration, uh, Java configuration object, and you see the beam validation annotations over there. Uh, we have our application object, and then in the run method, you see that uh, I uh, take uh, the jersey object and I register a uh, REST resource. In the constructor of the REST resource, I pass the name of the application and I pass uh, the, uh, the name that, I, that was specified in the configuration file. Here uh, we have uh, the REST resource. Uh, this is a typical JAXRS REST, uh, REST resource. The only thing uh, which is uh, specific for Drop Wizard is the timed annotation that I did put over there. 
and uh, Drop Wizard will collect statistics of this method uh, because of that annotation, and he will uh, show it in the metric space. Okay, my server isn't running right now, so I will start it. Yeah, okay, I have it in my buffer, right, voila. It's an old machine, voila. Now I go back, voila, I have a response, so my service up and running. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> my uh, presentation is a REST client of my server. What I do behind the scenes is uh, I do an Ajax request and I use jQuery uh, uh, to uh, add the response to the DOM. Take that PowerPoint. <laughs> if you look at the homepage of uh, Drop Wizard, then they see, and then you see in the middle of the page uh, that uh, they have a bold claim. It's the fastest way to build uh, production quality web services uh, in uh, the shortest time possible. Yeah, we will see, we will verify if uh, Drop Wizard can live up to its pros promises. Uh, one of the things uh, that you have seen is that uh, we only have one configuration file. So that's definitely interesting for ops. Uh, it's also outside of the application. Uh, another good thing, uh, when the application file, uh, the configuration file is not valid, then the service will not be uh, started. That's also a good thing. Uh, it sticks to the uh, fail-safe uh, principle. Another thing that you have is that uh, DropUser comes with uh, a fully uh, configured conf uh, login configuration. What they use is SLF4J as the API and logback as the implementation. But the interesting thing is that if you have libraries uh, using Java util logging or log4j or something, the logging messages will be routed to the logback logging. That's done uh, for you by Drop Wizard. Uh, another thing I will sh uh, show is that if you have an exception, voila, uh, an ID will be generated and you can use that ID to look up the stack trace, for it should be here, in your log files. <coughs> okay. Well, I go here to my metrics. So out of the box, yeah, you will have metrics of your applications. So here I should find Uh, yeah, statistics for my hello uh, resource. Then I go back again. And you have also a ping method, uh, information about the threads, health checks, a page with health checks, and so on. So that's something I shouldn't do. Voila. Yeah. So uh, we uh, proved it uh, out of the box. Drop user is fairly, uh, very uh, operations friendly. Uh, something I, I don't have really much time to cover this thing, but uh, what you need to remember is Drop Wizard uh, starts very fast. And it's because of uh, Drop Wizard isn't doing any fancy thing during the startup. It's not doing uh, class path scanning or, uh, or something like that. So if you valid or if you find flow state valuable, uh, Drop Wizard could be a good candidate for you. Uh, Drop Wizard, uh, we have already seen that. Uh, Drop Wizard is just uh, glue of a set of uh, Java libraries. And uh, it's a limitation, but uh, it's also an advantage in the sense that Drop Wizard offers the application uh, developer a very simple programming model. model. But uh, if you uh, start adding a lot of third-party bundles and so on, things are getting more complicated again. But hey, we can do the same thing as Drop Wizard. We can uh, take all the bundles that we use often and glue these together so that they are better integrated. And then we can offer a, si uh, this, this, a similar uh, program programming model to the application developer. That's what, uh, that's what we did. Uh, we created a, a microservices bundle. We have put it on uh, GitHub as well. 
the things that we added is uh, juice for uh, dependency injection. And uh, yeah, at the commission, we need to integrate with a lot of external uh, systems. And uh, one of the core principles of microservices is that you have uh, smart endpoints and uh, dumb pipes. So that's why we don't rely on an ESB and we put the logic in, uh, in the routing logic inside of uh, the microservices itself and uh, that's why we embed uh, Camel. So now we extend from uh, a microservice uh, class instead of an uh, application class and we have also a microservices environment uh, which wraps uh, the juice injector and the Camel context. So, a couple of dependencies that we need to add, Bannel, of course, and then a Camel Jersey 2 component. Then, uh, in the run method, you see that we now just uh, register uh, the class. Uh, construction injection will be done by Juice. And then in the initialize uh, method in the middle of the page, you see that we, uh, to a bundler, uh, a builder, we register our uh, Juice modules, specifying the wiring, and we uh, uh, register uh, the context, the camel context, camel root, sorry. So this is our uh, juice wiring, uh, our uh, resource. The only thing which is added is the annotations, the dependency uh, injection annotations. And then uh, here we have the roots, the camel root, and you see that camel offers a very nice uh, domain specific language to create uh, REST endpoints so that you can uh, uh, create REST sources programmatically. And the line under it, the REST configuration component, component Jersey 2, that's uh, where we say that for, uh, that uh, uh, you should use Jersey 2 as the REST framework behind the scenes. Voila, this one is not yet running, so I'll go back here. Up, close it. And uh, this is the service. Well, the thing is started. Voila, voila. Now we have a response from the service and also from uh, the route. The last thing that I will cover is uh, deployment as a war. Uh, out of the box, Drop Wizard applications are deployed as a uh, self-contained jar, and that makes a lot of sense if you have an infrastructure uh, with uh, Docker containers. And uh, those uh, organizations doing it like that, they also often uh, embrace or have a DevOps culture. But in a lot of uh, companies, uh, development and uh, operations are still uh, different entities. And then it's often the case that operations impose uh, the application developer upon the developers. And that was also the case for me. Uh, at the European Commission, we need to deploy our uh, applications on uh, WebLogic uh, servers. And uh, that's why we uh, create, we needed to find a way uh, to be able to deploy uh, drop wizard applications as well. And we created a library for uh, that, wizard in a box. It's also on GitHub. And what we do is we wrap uh, the drop wizard application object in the web application object. The web application object uh, is annotated as a web listener. So when the web application will be started, also the, drop, the wizard application will be started. We load uh, the configuration file from the class path instead of uh, from uh, the file system. And the last thing that we do is uh, we switch the default server factory, creating uh, the Jetty engine, we uh, switch it with a bridge factory. And the responsibility of the bridge is uh, to uh, fetch all the servers and the filters uh, defined on the Jetty instance and create the same, uh, the same ones on the server context, creating programmatically the servers and the filters. That's something you can do in uh, GE6. Okay, I will show that as well. Okay, in the application is just uh, adding a dependency and you, uh, uh, you should uh, wrap uh, the drop wizard application in a web application, what I also do is override the name of the application. And now I start the last thing. Voila. Voila. Now I uh, use a Tomcat plugin and I start the test bar. So 
So switch again. We are waiting. Voila, here it is. The same application developed, uh, deployed as a web, web application. I have included a couple of links. Uh, you can find the microservice uh, bundle to visit in the box, the sample, and also the presentation on GitHub. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>